when I was in corporate, I felt like it was like you're either camp numbers or camp creative. And in my role, I was a project manager. I started as a traffic manager at an advertising agency right out of college. And I fell in love with it because it got to balance both sides of my life. I got to really dig into the side of me who went to school for fashion. (laughs) And then I got to fulfill the side of me who was very type A, who got shit done and who was like, nope, I'm going to take a job. A lot of our work is so beautiful because it is showing you that, yes, you can gain some knowledge and some insight, but then like do something with it. Let's implement it to change our lives. We can create personal change what's up style nation welcome to the style for life podcast your podcast for all things style lifestyle and confident mindset thank you so much for being here it's your girl katie and you guys know i'm so freaking pumped to be here so My intention and goal with this episode every single week is to help you break down those fashion stereotypes. And remember that having great style has nothing to do with being a um, fashionista, an Instagram influencer, an icon, like a celebrity, none of that. It's really a self-development tool that you get to harness on a daily basis to reflect and express who you are so that you can feel good so that you can show up in your business and be who you need to be who you want to be with that being said i'm super pumped for today's episode because that quote right there is directly from the guest where who you need to be today so she's actually a member of the style squad she's actually an accountant Actually, she's an actress turned accountant, which I think is really fascinating because whether you're like the creative type or you're the numbers type, I really don't know the word for that. (laughs) Um, You can usually we label ourselves with this way of like, oh, no, I don't do numbers. I'm more creative type or, oh, I'm a numbers person. I can't get into clothes and fashion. Never really been into it. And that's one of my favorite things about Catherine Pomerantz, who is our guest today on the podcast, is the way that she flips between the two and the way that she took her passion for acting and theater and costume and saw that the creative community was labeled by like people who weren't good with money and that like the starving artist, right? Like that's such a fucking cliche thing. And this is how core beliefs in societies get built. And she was like, well, well, but wait, I don't have those beliefs around money because she didn't have them growing up. It wasn't part of what she was exposed to. She knew she could make a difference in her community and help those creative entrepreneurs who quote unquote, aren't good with money, don't like to track their numbers. I feel this so deeply in my bones. Tell me, does this resonate with you? When I was in corporate, I felt like it was like you're either camp numbers or camp creative. And in my role, I was a project manager and I always bridged the gap between managing the creative projects. I started out as a traffic manager in advertising. So all my marketing peeps, all my advertising heads, woot, woot, hit me up on Insta. Let's talk about it. So I started as a traffic manager at an advertising agency right out of college. And I fell in love with it because it got to balance both sides of my life. I got to really dig into the side of me who went to school for fashion. (laughs) And then I got to fulfill the side of me who was very type A, who got shit done and who was like, nope, I'm going to take a job. And, you know, I wanted some stability in my life and I didn't know how to turn fashion at the time into a career because like I joked, the internet was barely invented in the year 2000. So like, what were we going to do? So my whole career, I had this opportunity to split between both sides, right? My role as a traffic manager was to keep the creatives, the copywriters, the designers on track and then report back to the account managers on, like say for an advertising, the account managers and then, and our clients and then take our clients vision and kind of translate it back, right? So I always got to be this medium, so to speak. And it was amazing. And I really see how Catherine's work does that too. And the content and the vulnerability 
And the sharing that she's brought to the Style Squad has been amazing because I think she's really helped a lot of ladies open up around how they think about money. So I really wanted to harness that on today's podcast to share with you because I love how she takes the hero's journey, which is the journey that whenever you're watching TV, whenever you're reading a good book, it's the journey of the main character. It's the ups, it's the downs, it's how they win, it's how they persevere, it's that whole, it's the conflict and how they overcome it. And she talks about how we can use that in our money mapping and creating a map to the life that we want with our money. And this isn't just like woo-woo it's get down into it, like how to take those numbers and how to really rearrange your financial outlook to reflect the life that you want. And it's super fucking juicy. Just the nuggets that she's dropped have helped me in my business <laughs> and absolutely and the money conversations that my husband and I have on a weekly basis. We're both entrepreneurs, which means there's not a lot of stability in our income at all. And we have to work really, really, really hard or intentionally, I should say, to make sure that our money map is taking us where we want to go with these businesses, that it's serving its purposes. And she dropped this one line on me that really, really changed. Sometimes people say things or they paint a story or a picture, and I think it really changes the way that we see things. And she said, give your money a job, right? Like when you make that money, give it a job, tell it what to do. And instantly I was like, boom, give your outfit a job. (laughs) Like these are two energies that we interact with on a daily basis. Every day you have to get up and get dressed. And if you don't get dressed, you're staying in your pajamas. Those in and of themselves are giving you energy. You're drawing energy from whatever you have on your body. And every day you might not actually be spending money, but if you don't, spend money every day or something with money doesn't come up for you every day, please tell me how you're avoiding that. But between my kids needing stuff, between my pets needing stuff, between my business needing stuff, between my house needing stuff, between the freaking groceries that we're buying on summer um, vacation, between the vacations that we're planning, between all of the birthday parties and all the things like every day, there's a money exchange, an energetic exchange with money. So we've really dove into the synergy between money and style and how to get dressed for your money dates and how to turn it into a style ritual and a money ritual. And it's just so juicy. So you got to stay tuned. And the one thing, and we talk about this on the episode. Actually, I won't even spoil it. We'll just wait for the episode. So you guys got to tune in today to listen to this episode with Catherine Pomerantz, the bookkeeping artist. She's one of the founding members of the Style Squad. So I'm so honored to have her on the show today. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you connect with me after the show and tell me what you love. Drop those ahas. Connect with me on Instagram at Katie Allen Stylist. If you have a friend who really wants to learn how to harness her style and feel amazing in her clothes or is just looking for a way to think around money, we talk about the R word and we talk around fear around money. Um, and the R would be in recession. And we talk about how opportunities are always birthed out of weird times. So if you need that one liner, if you need that, pump me up or your friend needs that, share this episode with her. Can't wait for you to dive in and enjoy it. I will see you on the other side. You can get all the resources from today's episode will be in the show notes, how to connect with her, how to connect with me, how to learn more about the Style Squad, anything that you're looking for, check out the show notes. Connect with me on Insta at Kitty Allen Silas. All right, babe. See you on the other side. Catherine, I like that shirt. Oh, thank you. It is hot pink since this is not a visual medium and I am channeling the Barbie movie absolutely 100% right now. Like, how excited are you for that? I'm not even a fan of Barbie. I didn't think, but the second this movie came out and I knew Margot Robbie was attached and I'm just like, I am here for it and then they had the odyssey like trailer the pre-trailer whatever that dropped and i'm just like oh all of the pretentious movie things inside of me are bubbling up and i cannot wait so just for you i'm I'm doing my barbie core uh shirt today thank you thank you and it matches my closet so thank you yes my lipstick so thank you yes i was literally gonna say please shout out your lipstick because we're literally in the same same color 
I know, same. It's funny as I was never big into Barbie as a kid. Um, I remember my grandfather used to always say, one day when you grow up, you're going to regret not having a childhood. And I'm like, well, thanks, Papa, because guess what? Now I am having a childhood in my 40s. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm very excited for that. But like you said, I'm just excited for the fashion around it and the real message behind it. Um. But thanks for coming on the show. I'm super excited to talk to you about money. I'm really excited to talk to you too. I suppose we should warn everyone we talk a lot about these things. So we, I I literally in preparation for this podcast interview, I did like cool down things because normally I'm all like, oh yeah, I got to be all energized and I got to be all ramped up. I'm like, not me and Katie. No, I need to make sure we are like controlled and tight and not here for the next four hours. So (laughs) oh my god that's so funny it's so true we talk a lot Catherine's in the style squad we actually had this conversation in the style squad it was last month around money and the synergy between money and style and in my mind well I can virtually attach or correlate I don't know attach is the right word style to anything on the planet but one of my favorite things is money because Money is something that we all think about all the time, every day. And I think it impacts 99% of our decisions. And we wear clothes all day, every day. And whether we know it or not, it impacts all of our decisions. So I see so much synergy between the two. And I just, I also just love the way you talk about money and your background and how you got some money. So that being said, I mean, let's just go ahead and do a, a cheeky, uh, not cheeky, what's the word I was looking for? Cheesy, cheesy and cheeky intro. Tell us your story because you do have an amazing story on the transition from arts to money. And I think that's why you do this so well. Thank you. Yes, I will jump off from there and say, hey, I'm Catherine Pomerantz. Officially, since we did, we did skip that part. We're too excited about the pink, you know, Um I am an actress turned accountant and I now lead a team and I help small business owners manage their money. I am a both and as Katie kind of alluded to, because I have such a strong arts background. I'm a storyteller professionally. I still tell stories. I just now tell stories with financial reports. And it's very fun to get to do that work with businesses because businesses have big, complicated stories to tell and they affect a lot of people's lives. So that's kind of my interesting, fun, creative way of going about my, what is traditionally a very boring industry. And um, yeah, we do money storytelling and we do money mapping, which I think has a lot of synergy with the way that you approach style. I mean, it, it was, I think I listened to one podcast episode after I was introduced to you and I was like, oh, amazing. I'm going to hang out here because the way that we treat our work is so similar in that what you wear can so often help you become something new and different, right? Become what you need to be for that day, become what you need to be for that situation, for that event. There's a lot of power in how you present yourself to the world and claiming your style just for you as a person, instead of just as like, because you, you you make a very clear distinction between style and fashion, which I I love fashion just as much. But yes, I would, I would draw the same difference. And I think that money is plays in the same spheres, right? It's about power. It's about freedom. It's about the way that you express your values and express who you are as a person. There's a lot of very tangible things about our work, which makes it very, very, very fun. This isn't just thought work. These are things that you can really easily embody. But I also don't think there's a lot of people in style or fashion or fashion or style or money that are coming at it from that really strong embodiment space so mm-hmm. our conversations are always a lot of fun is that a good enough intro was that cheesy enough did i do it no, no that was great you nailed it you nailed it um that's i love what you said about we get to do both like we get to do the thought work behind it and the embodiment of it and i think that's been i think my biggest life lesson in the last couple of years is it's always the and like that's where we win is in the end but for some reason humans or society or like what we're taught we always feel like we have to decide that it's one thing or it's the other and it can't be both so like I love the way that you approach it and the way you think about it and because it is the and yeah yeah it's really interesting I always talk about how education is not implementation 
And I'm a complete and utter nerd. Complete and utter nerd. I love school. I'm married to an academic. I still am jealous that he gets to be at school all the time. And there's something about school that just doesn't feel like the real world. Like the things that we're learning couldn't possibly affect me. And so there is this huge disconnect between the stuff that we learn and the stuff that we do or who we really are as a person. I don't mean to like throw the education system under the bus or anything, because that's not my area of expertise. And that's not what we're talking about. But I think it starts, I really think it starts that young is that the things that we learn don't necessarily affect the real world. And so I think a lot of our work is so beautiful because it is showing you that, yes, you can gain some knowledge and some insight, but then like do something with it. Let's implement it to change our lives. And if we can create personal change, then we can create bigger bigger change too. You know, it's, it's small oceans, small waves lead whole oceans, right? Is the image I like to talk about. So with that intro then, Katie, where, sh- where should we go today? What are we talking about? About Well, I want to talk on a touch on money mapping because I'll never forget something that you said to me, like when we first met and you were like, I was doing my money map this morning or whatever word you use for dating your money map, looking at your money map. And you're like, I feel really abundant and I want to join the style squad. And I was like, oh my God, that's the sexiest fucking thing. Like anyone's ever (laughs) said is like, I was looking at my money. I felt great. And then, well, of course I was excited because you wanted to be in style squad, but just like that whole sentence, like money mapping felt abundant style squad. I was like, God, I think I'm going to fall in love with this girl. So I'd like to start a little bit with like money mapping and then we can go from there. So I don't even know the question to ask you because this is your whole thing. So tell us about money mapping. Yeah. Well, why don't we start by defining terms, right? So I introduced myself as a money storyteller and that is sort of a very playful way of something I do mean rather literally. I am very intentionally crafting and creating a story as I'm living it. So I spend time like a writer in research, in outlining what I want, in rereading past chapters to like check if my story and my, the heroes of my story are you know getting to the end that I want for them. This works because of the way that I treat my money. My money is the information that I reread and I get it. It's the way that I measure my progress towards my goals. It's the way I'm holding space and the vision for my future. And so I always say every good story needs a map. And so, you know, at its most basic level, a money map is just a very well-branded word for financial reports. On a personal level, most of us have some sort of budget or spending plan or feel like we should, which can be enough. (laughs) I know that can be a very loaded, loaded topic. Um, But as a business, also you've got spending plans, then you have revenue goals, you've got like lifestyles that you want to support. And then you've got, you know, all of the different cash flow forecasts and all the different tax strategies and all the different tools that all come together to make this big jargony mishmash of spreadsheets. It's not very useful, right? A report is something you're like, what, you read it and then like, you know, hang it on your fridge for your mom to put a gold star on. Like, what do you do with it? So I don't really call them reports. I focus on maps because maps are dynamic. Maps remind me I am telling the story. I am the owner of the story. I'm the author of the story. Maps also, again, point me in the direction I want to go. They highlight obstacles in my way. They allow me to measure the distance until I get to my goals. And that is a really good reminder of how money should be treated within your story about how money can be your teammate to achieve the things that you want. So where to start a money map is to start very personally. And I think this is one of the things, I mean, I'm going to keep saying this is why we jive so much, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it is, is that that vision for your life, how you want to live is the foundation for every money map. Yes, I work with business owners and yes, their personal money maps are going to touch a lot of people's money maps, right? As they grow their team, as they help their clients or, you know, as they develop products, et cetera, et cetera. But underneath it all, we want to make sure that we have a very value-centered, vision-driven leader who can make the tough decisions and can translate all of the technical numerical jargon that they're going to get fed from their accounting system. So we do that by having a very clear personal vision. If you have a very clear personal vision, I can then tell you how much that vision is going to cost, right? I can tell you, okay, I want to travel X amount of like weeks of the year. I would like to travel to these places. I would like to redo my wardrobe, right? And these are the kinds of brands I like to shop at. And so all the different 
things that are included in your ideal abundant life, that can all be tied to real measurable numerical monetary values. And so when I total all those things together, I now have what your personal salary should be set at. And then we work backwards to create the business model, the revenue goal that's going to support that, the spending plan that's going to support that revenue model, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll focus in just on the personal money map today. I know that you serve a lot of business owners, but in the interest of time again, let's start with just that first part of like, okay, how can I spend time with my money and just feel really abundant and be like, okay, I'm going to like go buy this thing. Oh, excuse me. I don't know if I'm allowed to say Oh, come on. It's my podcast. You know you're allowed to say fuck. I, I, I know. I was like, I can't remember if we beat that out or not. Um, but the, the ability to just say, fuck it. Yeah, I'm going to go spend a, a couple hundred bucks on this thing. Like right now. I mean, I've done that with way bigger amounts of money because I have that very strong communication channel open. So in effect, have a clear vision for where you want to go. Let's assign that a numerical value. That's now where my map is pointed, right? I want to get to that point. I, in real time, then need to look at what's actually happening with my money. This is why spending plans and budgets can feel super abundant and juicy because I can then compare that to what I said I wanted with my money and what I'm actually doing with my money. When we look at that, if with that angle of, oh, I am mapping my way towards a better option and I just need to make like a 1% change each month, that becomes a lot less judgmental and a lot less overwhelming than, oh my God, like budgets are so constricting. I feel so limited, you know, like I, I, the lack of the scarcity, all of that can really, really start to drive home to us. The shame also of, wow, I just really can't get my spending under control or wow, this is so hard for me to do to like, put all this information together for my bank sheets. Like it just seems like such a waste of time. I'm always categorizing all of those kinds of thoughts. They don't happen as much when I come at it from a storytelling perspective, right? If I'm thinking of it like a map, I already have a kind of a fun way of, well, this is what I said I want. So let me compare where I'm at right now. Let's get it all together, get it all organized, have your wine, have some loud music, jam out, you know, and just put it all together and then pause to reflect and have a way to translate it. This is what my ideal life will cost. I want to send X to retirement. I want to save X for this trip that I want to take. Um, I want to save X so that I can go shopping, right? Because I need new bathing suits. It's summer. We just dropped a great like bathing suit guide in the style squad. So I was like, I got to go shopping, right? I need to embody some new things so I can achieve new goals. So I can, uh, you always use the example of exercise, which I just can love because it's like the perfect way of outlining this is Mm -hmm. if I want to show up as a healthy person and go to the gym, I need to do everything possible to make that new habit like feel good. And so some of that is, do I look good? Do I have the equipment that I need to do that? Do I have the clothes that I need to do that? That I know, um, my, my daughter is almost two. And when I came back from, okay, it's now time to get back into working out. And it was really difficult. The very first thing I did was I'm going to buy some new clothes because if I have to wear my old clothes that don't fit right, I am going to just feel like crap. I'm going to buy new clothes that I like that fit well. I don't even have to put the old ones. I'm not even going to try them on and see, Ooh, maybe, maybe I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just going to skip that step. I just know better. I'm going to support myself up front with some investment of my money or of my clothes. Right. But then the same thing in the story (laughs) and show up for this better. So That allows us to reflect on, wow, I'm way over budget and like eating out this month. Oh my God, my eating out budget is twice what it's supposed to be. But then let's like look back at why. Why was it twice what it was supposed to be this month? Hey, you know what? I had a friend who texted me at the last minute. Oh my God, I am going to be in town for this conference. Do you have time to see me? And this is an old college friend and I haven't seen them in years. So I'm like, oh hell yes, I'm absolutely going to see you. And we just went out on the town and had a blast. And it was like a really, really, really special moment with an old friend that I did not plan for in advance, but is absolutely in line with my ideal vision for myself and for my future. So it's not that, wow, that really sucks. Oh my gosh, I failed. It's, hey, I supported my best self in a really interesting way. And where else on my map can I adjust to make space for that? Because I'm having this conversation regularly. And if I notice, woo, I went a little, a little bigger than I expected here, but you know what, this area I don't need this month, or I'm not paying as much attention to, or I could pause for a little bit and and fill out that gap. Maybe I'm going to do that because all I need to worry about is being in the flow of what's happening right now. My map is keeping me pointing in the direction I want to go. And 
almost without realizing it. And you can show up for this process regularly. So this is the key that I always teach people is I want to teach you to make a money map. And then I want to teach you to have a money ritual so that you can show up for this type of creative space, this type of like financial planning CEO time for yourself. If you do that, and I've got a whole framework around it, right? I've got all these super steps to make it easier and to make it more fun. And we can get into that if you want, we've got time. But the main important point is just do it. Just show up, read your money map, compare it to what's happening in real time and do that over and over and over. You don't have to know anything about your money. You will learn so much about yourself and you will learn so much about your own patterns and you will start to self direct. You will start to actively write that story as it is happening. And so it's really fun to get to do this with clients where, yeah, I just kind of talked all these sort of silly, like I'm a storyteller, right? And I'm going to sit here. I'm going to outline like my ideal hero's journey. And it's like, that's so cute. Let me look at me in my hot pink today too. Like, wow, she really is cute. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> but I've seen it with hundreds and hundreds of people at this point with the seven years I've been in business. I've seen this to myself, you know, years and years and years. If I can show up for that work, I really do get more of what I want. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. I can get whatever I want because all I need to do is get a little bit closer each time. And I have a really powerful tool to help me measure my success, to help keep me going. So sometimes, you know, I, I money map and I'm like, mm, this one hurts. This one hurts. I'm going through something and this is going to need a lot of time and attention. And I need to really focus on my spending in order to best support myself. And I need to cut out everything else. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And then other times you get just as many times, if not more times of, wow, things are going better than they used to. And I'm making improvements and I'm moving forward and I'm seeing change and I'm feeling abundant. And maybe I'm going to start buying myself some more fancy clothes because I think that would be a really cool way to show up for myself. So that was my, that was my work in the moment of the story you, you shared, Uh, but it happens all the time with clients in, in all sorts of areas is we get to watch our stories actually start happening the way we want. Oh, so it's so funny the whole time you're talking, I'm like taking little notes. And I was like, the what I love the most about the way you talk about money is the words you use and they sound so sexy. And I was like, that's right. Catherine's making accounting sexy. And that's funny <laughs> how we talked about that in the style squad. And when I was thinking this, I and that thought never crossed my mind before we hit record today. But I was like, well, I love listening to you talk about it because you're making money, which can be really scary, sounds sexy and fun because of the words that you use. Like when you just use the word money map and you say like, because it's taking me where I want to go. I hate the word budget. Like, oh, it makes me want to vomit. It's right up there with diet, right? Like everyone's like, oh, the anti-diet. I get it because it's like that feeling of like constricting. So like the way you've turned it into mapping is so good and like and then you say it's a ritual and I was like damn it she makes it sound so sexy and then I was like that's right (laughs) because we're making accounting sexy I love it it is that is a hashtag that I use in style squad all the time is the (laughs) sexy accountabilities buddies and uh make accounting sexy so full full credit to my style squad girls because that is absolutely something that they are helping me to embody and embrace more but so. your words are already so sexy. And so like now that's probably why it was so seamless to like move right into your style because the work you're doing is already juicy. It's so much juicier than, in my opinion, obviously of the way that I feel like money has really been talked about. One side note I have to throw in here for my editor, which is the husband. When you talk about money map, the first thing I thought about is when he proposed to me, he did a treasure hunt. Um, it was my birthday and he set this massive treasure hunt. And then the last thing in the treasure hunt was the ring um, that said, will you marry me? So like when you talk money map for immediately, I like pictures, like a treasure hunt map. So I just had to say that that was funny. Values are everything. And well, this, and, and tell me if this resonates with you or your clients, everybody, when people come to me, they just want, they're like, just give me the clothes, just give me the outfit. I'm like, I know, I know you want to just know what to wear and you want to know how to style your stomach and you want to know what to wear to this upcoming party. I know, but like, who are you? How do you want to feel? What are your values? Because if we don't talk about those things first, then nothing I pick is going to work, right? Like you could be the most talented stylist and the planet, it really doesn't matter without those things. I personally 
until starting this business, I hated, like, I hated that. I'm like, you don't, I don't need to know who my target market is. I don't need to slow down. Like, I just need to know the best strategy. I just need to know the best thing I can do with my money. I just need to know where to put my money so that I can do this. And that's just something I feel like that comes up more and more and more. Do you get that pushback a lot? Um, like, Hey, we're going to slow down to speed up, which is me personally, again, like another thing that just like gets me going (laughs) because I'm like, no, I just want to get it all done. (laughs) And (laughs) it really is where the juice is, is like, who am I? Because everything, once you know your values and once you know someone's values, it's so, for me as a service provider, it's so easy to serve someone. If I know their values, it's so easy to do the things. And it sounds like from a money, it's so easy to serve them and create their money map if we know their values, right? To work together, to hold that space. Do you find that a lot of people have problem, uh, not have a problem, but like maybe resist that work at first and then are like, oh my God, I'm so excited, are so grateful that we did it this way? Yes. Um, I would say that some people are so resistant to it. They just won't end up working with me, right? A lot of people will come and just be like, wow, like I really need, I really need this financial report do these financial reports for me. I mean, sure I can. Right. And I, you know, and when I, early on in my days, I, I did right before I kind of uncovered money storytelling, I I'm still an accountant. I can do all that math. Right. It's beautiful. It's beautiful work. And I will do it for you still. But I noticed when I started, cause I I'm an actress turned accountant, right? So one of the primary reasons I started my own business around money is that in my community, money was extremely, um, contentious, we'll say. (laughs) Stereotypically, artists are not financial gurus. Um, And there's this whole way of approaching money that was really interesting to me because I didn't grow up with that story around money. Um, And I kind of started to get really curious where I was having all this personal stress around money. Everyone I knew was having stress around money all the time. And even the people I really admired who I like thought had made it, right? They were just dealing with even bigger money because you had a mortgage and you had kids and you had like wanting to retire. It's like, it just seems like it gets bigger, but it never seems like it ends. Yeah. And I was really fortunate to know some people who didn't seem to have that kind of financial stress just all the time. And so I thought if I could figure out how money works, I think I could help a lot of people. And then I started to study money. And about a year later, I had started my own accounting firm. It's like, this is amazing. Money is so cool. It's so easy. I had no idea. I cannot wait to tell everybody I have solved this, which is very cute. I was in my 20s. So you can all forgive me for my <laughs> enthusiasm at the time. But I really thought, hey, I just need to give people a little bit of education and we can really nail this. And then I had a strange experience of I had early clients that half of them, maybe not half, maybe slightly more than half, right? But I had two groups. Some were killing it. Like we'd show up and it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And we got to do all these really interesting projects. And I got to hear all their updates about their goals. And even when things weren't going well, it was still like, hey, we have identified a new obstacle. Let's write this into it. Like now I would say, let's write into your story, right? Because stories are boring without any conflict. Like you have to have a conflict in the story to have something heroic, right? Uh, that That's my new perspective. At the time, I didn't have that language, but that was very much the attitude is like, all right, let's handle this, right? What, what do we got? What are our resources? And then I had other clients that had all the same tools, all the same beautiful organization, all the same really effective, really smart tax strategies. And they were in kind of the same chaotic spot. Every time we talked, it never changed. It was the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. I was doing the same work for both people. What was the difference? Where, where does that, what was happening? Right. And when I started to get curious about that and I started to dig a little bit deeper, that's where that education is not implementation really came to light for me in that I I cannot tell you the number of people I work with who have paid thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars from a really smart, really talented consultant or coach or just expert in their field. And they have, I've even worked with people who have like the most gorgeous budgets I've ever seen. And they're like, yeah, I have it. And I'm like, oh, well, what do you do with it? I have it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. And I, I hear that over and over and over again. Like, okay, maybe they're even well organized and they have all these beautiful reports, but they're so disconnected from the process. It's like, doesn't matter, right? This is, it's nice. It's there, but like, I never look at it. I have no idea what's going on. Or they got all these reports and then they just didn't know the next steps or for whatever reason, they just never did anything with them. Even if they had all the next steps, they just stood there with it. 
And so when I started to dig a little bit deeper, it was really, it has to be about your personal story. Like it has to be about living your values. It has to be about that deeper, like, yes, I need to slow you down to give you this clarity because otherwise when you come up against the next conflict in your story, the next time you have to level up the next action item that you have resistance to, you will never move forward. You won't have enough motivation and you won't have the translation tools to recognize the thoughts that are coming up to you as, as stories, right? So much of the work that I do is really heavily in that coaching sphere of helping people identify the thoughts that they don't want anymore, that they don't want to follow, that it's not serving them, that actually, honestly, as, as you as I do more and more of this, it's like, they're not even true and we don't even need to spend time on. If you get really skilled at it, you're like, oh, that's a wild thought. And you're just kind of like, huh, that's funny. Like, all right, let's wait for the next one to come. And maybe that one serves me better, right? This is why affirmations can be so powerful, but they take so much practice. At least for me, it took me years of thought work before an affirmation really started to serve me because I had so much practice to do to just stop believing my own brain, right? To just stop believing that the information I'm being given is always the truth. And that storytelling thing allowed me to step into this really, really playful space where I didn't have to believe because I'm just messing around, right? I'm just messing around. I'm just here to throw paint at the walls and, oh, wouldn't it be nice someday if, and yeah, here's a budget with this cool business plan and it could all work out because the math makes sense. Sure. Fine. If I'm willing to show up to that one more time, at least once a month with what my numbers are actually telling me, and I just compare the two, your brain, as I've already outlined this process, right? Your brain will automatically start playing in that box and just be like, well, what can I do to tweak it and get a little closer and get a little closer and get a little closer. And so, yes, to answer the resistance question, which is what you actually asked me, sometimes I can't help overcome that resistance. Sometimes people have to be willing to jump in it with me. And it almost always happens every single time I've done coaching, especially with my one-on-one coaching clients who are with me for like six months and we go really deep and we really dig into things for them and we're really like in it with them, supporting them as they learn to become this new kind of business leader. There's always a moment where they just want to rush to the end. They just are like, okay, um, but like we need to kind of get there. And there's always this like right at the last third, there's all of a sudden like, and now here's all the work. And now here's all the stuff we've been waiting for. And now there's, here's this huge breakthrough. And it's like, boom, 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 right? And like, I think all the best stuff happens right in that last hour. But in order to have that last hour, you had to have the first, however many, right? Mm-hmm. Like you had to have the first two thirds. Because that's going to inform the personal, the personal story that is going to actually allow you to unlock or uncover or move forward. It's, it's the same reason why we all know comparison like isn't helpful. But sometimes we get stuck in it because we just don't know. It's like, well, if it works for them, like I'm going to copy it. I'm going to do it. Honestly, I think that's great advice. I have no idea. So I'm just going to copy what this person's doing. If I'm money mapping the whole time and I'm reflecting on how it felt or if I like what I'm getting, then I'm going to start to tweak and develop and make it my own. And then I'm going to have even more success and probably even my own thing I can teach and sell if somebody else is already selling it, right? <laughs> like, yeah, you're going to have all this new expertise, all this, all this new knowledge, right? Um, But it really, really does come back to how can I make this my own thing? Which yet again is why it's fun to hang out with your work because it's that's what style is, right? It's sure there's all these rules about clothes, but they're so basic and they're so repetitive. And it really becomes about how can I play with this, right? Like, okay, I know I look better in like, okay, I know I look great in pink. Honestly, I look great in pink. I have the great undertones for it. Like my daughter looks great in pink. I never thought I'd dress my daughter in all the pink because I'm not a pink person, despite my love of the Barbie movie and my shirt today. I'm not a pink person. Don't like pink, all black, all the time. It's great, right? But knowing that I sometimes look really good in pink, like today I wanted to feel fresh and vibrant and here I am. I'm like, look at all my glowing skin that I didn't have to do too much for because this color looks good on me, right? I don't need to think, well, pink is my best color. It really kind of is. And wear it all the time and that's all I can do and I'm in this box and oh God, I hate pink, but like I better wear it because I look good. You know, that's, it's not about, well, this is the rule. This is the way that we do like no white after Labor Day. I don't even know how to measure that. Like that's always my favorite rule of like, what is a rule? Like when does Labor Day start or end? It's a calendars or circles. I don't, I don't get it. Right. It's a, the rules and the, the methods and the jargon and the systems, they give us a place to stand on to then figure out how this best serves us and is best getting the story that we want to tell. 
and that we best get to change the world in the way that we're really meant to and called to. So I guess I got really like, I don't know, that was a really long answer. And I got a little bit like, woo, big and all encompassing with that. But that really is kind of how I picture this work is that, yeah, some people are not going to jump in and that's okay. They're not ready for it. And when they really are, when it, when you really, really want to do something, I can show you how to do that. And you just have to be kind of willing to show up and trust and no, you're not going to be right. Re- honestly, some days I'm not ready for that work. And I know that's how it works. Some days I'm just like, I don't want to, <laughs> like you said, I don't want to. And I know I got to slow down and I know I got to do even more of it then if I'm having that kind of personal ick, right? It's like, oh. okay, if I'm really having this ick, I better leave two hours, not just one, <laughs> right? Like, okay, I'm having a really personal ick. I better make sure I like take off work early on a Friday because I'm going to need to get through some stuff to get to where I actually want to go. I cannot skip over it. I have to give it the space that it needs in order to be more effective and faster and have more experiences that I like. So so true. And it's, I, and that's what I like about money and style because they impact our lives all day, every day. And I was telling someone the other day, if you have resistance to wearing something that someone's telling you to wear and you have a block around it, like slow down and then ask yourself, well, where else is that coming up in my life? Because how we do one thing is how we do everything. If you don't want to, I don't not want to slow down and think about myself for fashion just because I love fashion. I don't want to slow down. <laughs> like I just want <laughs> to be good. And like that, when I have my mental breakdowns, you know, quarterly with my husband on the floor and I'm crying and he's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I, my, I always come back to, I just want to be great. Like, I don't want to slow down and learn to do another fucking thing. Like, I just want to be great at all of it. And no matter what, like, that's not the game that we're playing. And it's funny, you yeah. were talking about how you're about to win. And it's like that last hour and all clicks together. And I immediately was like, just like the escape room. <laughs> like, you spent 45 <laughs> yeah. minutes doing dumb shit and you just don't know how close you are to escaping and you're like I'm never gonna get out this is so stupid and you're one step away like you're just one thing away and then once you do it you're like I'm the fucking queen of the earth <laughs> like I can do anything yeah. and I think that's just such a great analogy for business style clothes fashion exercising eating like the reason I asked that really is because it doesn't matter if it's money it doesn't matter if it's clothes like for me my big one right now is food it's like, slow down. What do you want? What are your values? Why are you really doing this? It, whether it's all of these things, like that's the game that we play. That's the game of life. And I love it. You said, if we can make it playful, if we can gamify it, it's like, well, all these things work because that's how you have to approach it. But yeah, I, there, I hate, I hate the analogy. Like you have to be in enough pain to like want to change things. But I think there is some element of you have to be willing to recognize I need to become a different person because I want something different. Yes. That doesn't mean you're going to change who you fundamentally are, but there are all sorts of things. I mean, psychology, I'm a psychologist. So like, this is something that comes up in psychology all the time, right? Is that there are all these different elements of our personality that are just things we've adopted and can easily discard and put new things on that do not fundamentally change anything about us as people, which is like so mind blowing in and of itself. And I constantly, I mean, this part of the reason I love money is that I get to watch that progress and I get to have a lot of clarity about if I want change in this way, this is the area I need to focus. And I have confidence and I have clarity to just keep focusing here and just start cutting out all this other stuff that just doesn't matter. Just stop focusing on it. Don't pay attention to it. Some of it may have been useful or important at one point, but it's not who I want to become. Yes. And that is that, that eating humble pie is like, if I want to do different, I have, to, if I want to be different, I have to do different. And that is a very, un, very, very uncomfortable Sucks. place to start. It, it, it's so hard to start to even get to that point to start that. And then it's uncomfortable as you learn all the new stuff to do that. It's just like, oh, ah, but discomfort. I think I told you this. It was like, I need discomfort for breakfast. I'm like, I am practicing discomfort. On a day, like taking cold showers, right? Like working out with a little bit of heavier weights. All of these ways are, I build my tolerance for discomfort because I know I need to lean into those moments. I need to show up and be willing to just be like, yep, I have reached that spot and here we go. Let's like unpack those things. And so, you know, I've, I've, I like you, I've been on this journey for many years. So that was not a, you know, beginning level Catherine. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, uh, I, I, came, I came 
kicking and screaming into this. <laughs> there are claw marks and all of the things I've let go of, right? That, that, um, but it is that it really is. That's what it. That's what it. That's what it's like. It's really. <laughs> And we've talked about the hard and the uncomfortable parts, but it is also like at the end of the day, like, but it is fun. Like I, I really get to have fun with my money. And that is not something most people, I don't care. Most people say my money is fun, right? I, I have so much fun making a budget. When I want to feel better, I go budget. And my husband thinks I'm crazy, but it works because it's like, but this is my story. This is getting what I want. This is like, I am, I am going to be that someday. Um, and I'm figuring out how to make it possible. And so I, I think clothes is just to kick it back to style and why I love that so much is like, you can get that kind of experience really fast yeah. with your clothes, right? Is I need to be this today. I'm just going to wear it. I'm just going to put it on, right? And hey, all of a sudden, I look great. I look exactly like I needed to look or wanted to look. And that's power. That is a feeling that your clothes can give you. That again, you can start to translate and like superimpose the other areas of your life. That is just like, oh, uh, I, I, I practice the discomfort and I practice all of the, I'm feeling awesome. And so I genuinely, I, I rely on that so much. It's like, oh, I feel awful and blah, blah, blah. Like, well, at least my hair looks good. <laughs> it's, like, it's the power of it. And it's like how we started yeah. this whole conversation. And it is, it's a ton, oh God, it's a ton of instant gratification. There's so many things in the journey that, money, losing weight, whatever it is, hitting a big goal in your business, that just takes time. And it's baby step, baby step, baby step. And like, that's why I always say like, style is the unsung hero of like your self-care routine or whatever it is. Cause you can use it daily as an instant gratification to just get you there quicker so that you can become, do that. Like you said this on I think it was in the Style Squad presentation you did. Two things you said. One of them I have written down right there. Where who you need to be. I just think that's amazing. Like where who you need to be today. And then you'd also said like you you like to give your money a job. And then I was like, yes, give your outfit a job. Like same thing. Where who you need to be today. Give your outfit a job. You have to put on clothes. Make that shit count. Like give it a job. What are you doing today? And, and you and I, we've talked a lot, obviously. So we've talked about this. Like, Give it a job. It can be today um, doing 5 million podcasts. Tomorrow, my outfit's job is to make me feel comfortable. Then my outfit the next day is to make me feel like a queen again. But it can't be like the habit, right? Like the being comfortable, the being casual, that just can't become the habit. Like, And that's why I love the way that you talk about money. And like, I think there's so many correlation of style. But I want... To do a little bit of implementation, I think we've done some education. I think we've done some implementation too. But there's one conversation I feel like I'm having a lot. Um, and I try to be mindful of everyone's in different spots, but I feel like when it starts to become an echo chamber and the emails I'm getting or the social media that I'm participating in and the conversations I'm participating in that I want to talk about on my podcast is I feel like a lot of female business owners that are at least in my circle right now are feeling things slow down in their business or tighten in their business, or maybe things that worked in 2020 and 2021 just aren't working the same in 2023. Um, and, and I, I'm a huge believer in like the contagion, right? Like emotional contagion and big words get thrown out and then people just like buy into it, whether it's true or not for them and their business. But I feel like people have been using the word recession and then it's starting to create this trickle down, like your favorite influencer saying it. Then you hear someone else say it, blah, 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 blah. Well, I have two questions. One, have you been hearing this too? And then two, what's the super actionable, tangible thing that you can gift? Like the female entrepreneur that's listening to this, like what's the one baby step that she could go do today, tomorrow? to just like move the needle in her business from a money standpoint. It, maybe it's a tax tip. Maybe it's a money thing. Like what's the thing? But first, do you feel like this has been bubbling up for you? I feel like it's been bubbling up for me. And while it could be true, I feel like there's an end to that too that I really want to explore. Yeah. So yes, this is a real phenomenon. Um, psychologists talk about it. Money people talk about it. Uh, economists talk about it. Um as soon as someone says the word recession, <laughs> it, it can have 
can have it can have an impact. It's like, well, fuck if that's what they're doing, we better do it too, right? Like if they're if they're pulling back, back, then we better copy their moves. I mean, that's literal business advice sometimes, right? Is do what the other people are doing because maybe they know something you don't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the secret to that, which you know, a lot of people I hang out with in personal finance, is somebody somewhere is always yelling recession. And of course they always look smart because there's always ups and downs. That's literally always. what markets mean. Yeah. Always. Right. So it is also equally true. The story that there are recessions, that's true. It is also equally true that somebody's always thriving in recessions. Yes. Somebody's always using a recession to get rich. Yes. Somebody always has the thing that people will need that will catapult them to great success. Yes. Right. And I don't even mean that in a way of like, oh, somebody's getting rich in a recession. It's like, you know, that can come up with some value things. Even as I say that, I'm like, oh, I can, I can already hear in my head people saying like, yeah, the haves and the haves not, right? That sort of like inequality conversation. And that's not what I mean is that there are plenty of people who, okay, let's, look at, let's take an example. Let's take a, a tangible example. A woman business owner listening to this, right? Feeling a slowdown. Great. Everything comes in cycles. What do you need to do with that slowdown? You have more space. Mm -hmm. You have more time. You have more rest. What is your relationship like with those things? Mm -hmm. Can you step into a fertile void to be creative, to create the next thing for yourself? Now, this is way easier when you have a financial foundation to stand on, right? I, I can step into creative voids because I have a really strong financial foundation. I have like over a year's worth of cash that I have available to me because I've been practicing my money story for a long time is that I want my money to support my big ideas. I want to have a risky lifestyle. I want to run my own business, right? I want to have big, bold moves in that. So I've built out that space. So I will, I will acknowledge, yeah, that's great to say is go into a void and do, you know, take, embrace that thing. But I think that that would be the tangible thing for you now is if you're feeling a slowdown, what is it that you need to learn or focus on or change or do within that slowdown? And how can you make that possible? Is it, I need to be a caregiver and this allows me to fully step into, I get to take care of somebody in my family who really needs it right now. Is it that like, um, th this is one of my favorite examples. The number of dancers or Broadway people who had babies during the pandemic was staggeringly high. Because of the first time ever in their career, okay, I can't work. Yeah. Okay, so why don't I have it now? Like, I literally will have, it will be way harder for me to force myself to step away from work and the thing that I love in order to allow my body the space to give birth. So yeah. I think that's a really great analogy is if you're feeling slowdowns, yes, you can go to your money map and you can take all that panic with you and you can come at your money that way. I would encourage you to think about, okay, if I came at that, like my partner that way, right. With that kind of energy, like the conversation is going to feel very defensive. Yeah. So at least acknowledge coming into it. I am stressed. <laughs> I'm going to dump on you. Please be open to that and give me good feedback. Okay. We can have that conversation. Right. And I've, I've literally told my husband that I am stressed. Don't take it personally. And he's like, okay, correct. Go. Right. You can do the same thing with your money. I am stressed. I need something from you. How can you then embrace this space, create even more space, really lean into this time of quiet? What do I need to create? What do I need to learn? What can I do if I have this available to me for the first time ever? Right? How can I make, how can I lean into that? Is the, oh, this is the question that I ask myself. It's like, okay, if this is a period of quiet, like, what am I going to do with it? Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense because again, it's really hard for me to answer like on a big, level because I am so hyper specific to what is the individual story that we're having, right? Like if there was, if it was you in front of me, Katie, you'd be like, okay, like let's like dig for that. What is it that you need in this space? And sometimes it's, I have this new business idea I've always wanted to launch. I've never had space for, or, you know, there's this thing that like I've been ignoring in my business systems. That's a weakness that is now like, Hey, I, now that I'm feeling right now, your clients are like, nope, 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 nope. They're like, okay, that weakness is really killing us, right? We got to button that up. We've got to fix it. We've got to pivot. We've been, or it is again, that caregiver thing. It's like, I've always wanted to do this. That is not work related. Like what if I just release and, and step into something different for a while, right? What would that do for me as a creative individual and, and person? So the idea of money 
serving your best self and not just like the business that I'm in, right? Don't be, don't be stuck in this is just the way it works, right? Every time there's a market change, it's an opportunity to do something different, to get something different, to be a little different. And that can look really small or really big. I, a lot of the people that I know are actually still thriving. Um, a lot of my clients, it, it, even through the pandemic, I mean, we collectively all grew our income by like $10 million through the pandemic when everyone else was contracting, contracting, contracting because of some of the way that we can show up for our money work, right? Is it's like, hey, this is how we pivot. This is how we think through these things. This is the, how I can be in the flow of what's really happening. This is what the feedback that my money is giving me that I want to implement and do. So I don't know if that was one tangible. <laughs> like, it's okay. If I could distill it down, yeah. The one tangible thing is the money story I want you to have is, well, somebody is always thriving. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for me? Mm -hmm. Leave that there. I think that's an an amazing answer. Um, As someone who worked in marketing for 20 years, right? What's the first thing everyone wants to cut when, no matter recession or not, whenever a business hits a speed bump, the first thing that everyone wants to cut is marketing. Then I was in public retail, public meaning bought and sold on the stock market, right? So like we lived and died by that. And I just learned so much around what that meant um, because it didn't matter. The the damn market could be on fire. The first thing, every time our company had a project, the first thing they want to do is cut the marketing budget. And you're like, okay. So like, I've, I've literally never feel like there's a point in my career ever where it didn't feel like I was operating from this space of like, you know, how do I stay creative and agile and change? And I think that's the message. Uh, like we're talking about money and that's just something I want to remind people of is like, it always changes. It ebbs and flows. But I love your example of like, what do I need right now? Because that's actually the conversation my husband and I had just had, I had last night. Summer is always my slowest season. And I serve female entrepreneurs. We're all pulling back. Our kids are home from school. It's a lot of people's slowest seasons. Your money shifts, right? You're vacationing. Your kids are in summer camp. Usually they're in school and it's free, like whatever that is. And that's exactly for the first time, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do with my summer. And I think you know this, like I invested in a community strategist and I'm pulled back and we're going to deep dive into style squad. So when the fall comes, the squad, style squad is going to be better than ever. And like that, that felt really um, empowering for the first time. And it definitely wouldn't have happened without the money story and the mindset stuff. Um, but I think the other thing that you say a lot that it's really important to keep in mind when you're going through something like this and shit feels crazy and wild is no matter what, don't start ignoring, don't stop having that money date. And I love the way you just talked to money. Like it was a person. Don't stop having the money date. I always go to my husband, yeah. like, don't try to fix it. Like, I just want to cry. I don't need you to fix it. I just want to cry to you. <laughs> So like, (laughs) don't stop having the money date. And I like how you always say like, am I one percent closer? And like, maybe that needs to be, you know, like review what that means. I think that's really tangible. And then put on your favorite lipstick when you have that money date. Just don't stop. Don't do the head in the sand game because that's really going to move you further and further and further away from what the goal is. That there's even a level up of awareness that can happen for you personally, right? Just even just listening to the way that you've described your history with money. I'm not surprised that the word recession becomes a giant glaring loud alarm bell to you is because yeah, I was in marketing and that means I'm always getting cut. And so there might be some trauma work there for you around your money is like, Hey money. I know in the past, this meant I needed to work even harder and I needed to pivot. I'm not in marketing anymore. Right. Our story is so different. I can heal my reaction to this word. Because I, for example, someone says recession to me, I don't even notice. I'm like, cool, stock market's on sale, yo. That's like, what, buy, right? <laughs> that's like, what my husband you know? said. He said, all I hear is uh, stocks are on sale and I'm about to spend some money. And it wasn't even that yeah. I was careful for my job. It was the marketing budget was getting cut, which meant right. that our job right. yeah. got harder and we had to think more and we had to become more creative. And it's like, you just wanted it to be easy. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like, hey, I'm a session. I better think harder. I better like come up with something creative. I know that kind of leads into even the story I was saying, but it's like really interesting. That it's like, hey, for me personally, I'm someone's always thriving. What does that mean for me personally? Yeah, for me personally, right now, I think that there's a success contract. I in order to be successful in recession, I better work twice as hard. Do I really need to work twice as hard right now? 
Let me really actually think about that. Yeah. And maybe the answer is honestly, yeah, because things are are different and that's the, that's what I have available to me because I don't, I can't hire it out. Right. I can't budget. It's like, I need to book a couple more clients, get through some things. I mean, that's an okay answer. Right. But that is just, it's one of those that's like, yeah, when we listen to how money plays up in our stories, it's like, it's interesting how it, it's always, it's the same stories over and over, but the way that they come up and the words that will bring them up for people are so different and so interesting. Um, not that we need to deep dive in this because we've been talking a long time. So I will kind of switch back to close real fast about that Monday day thing and be like, literally yesterday I needed to make, make a bunch of content. And so I wanted to feel both super sexy and super abundant. And I got dressed specifically for that. And I was like, literally thinking of you as like, Kate would be so proud of me because I am wearing such a good outfit. And I didn't post it in the style squad because it was a sexy feeling outfit. I was like, this does not need to be a public one, (laughs) but I am by myself in my best underwear, just writing, 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 writing in my like full length silk robe. Like I am embodying the energy I need today. And it was just so fun. So that also might be a good tangible takeaway is yeah, break out that lipstick and break out what you need to have sometimes and your money can give it to you or your clothes can give it to you sometimes. Sometimes you can use the outside forces to fake it until you believe it yourself. Yeah. Or to just up level the inside. It's kind of like always like yin and yang, like what comes first, like you're talking about the calendar, what comes first? It's a circle, right? So if the inside isn't working, use the outside. If the outside isn't working, use the inside. And like, they're always flowing. It never stops. Thank you for not posting it though, because there's the num- the other thing I'm leaning into more and more is get dressed for yourself first. The things that we do when no one is watching are the things that count the most. So with that, Catherine, thank you so much for being on the show. Where can everybody find you? How can they connect with you? Tell us what's happening and how we can have more of you. Absolutely. So if you want to jump in to money storytelling, I have a quiz on my website, katherinepomerance.com. That's Catherine with a K and Pomerance with the Z. You can take that quiz. It'll tell you about your hero archetype and give you a really tangible lesson to get started right away. If you're listening to this being like, God, I just really want Catherine to make a money map for my business. Shoot me an email. I'd be happy to do a consult with you and see if that's a good fit. That's Catherine at bookkeepingartist.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm super grateful for you. I always love our conversations.